music sure has come a long way, hasn't it? Like I said, it sounded a lot better on a Tandy than it did on a PC. There's one thing the Tandy could do well at the time, it was music. Graphics are pretty much the same as they were back in the day, but that music sure is a lot better. What manner of creature is this wandering nearby? Ah, uh, it's a munchkin. Oops, sorry, I missed it. <laughs> That's Gurgi, uh, this cute little creature that runs around and asks you for munchings and crunchings. Gurgi is not too clean and could use a bath, but he is friendly and pleasant. Hi, I'm Gurgi. Do you have any munchings and crunchings for me? My Gurgi impression kind of sucks, sorry. But let's give him a little something and make some friends. Gurgi loves apples. Gurgi now turns friends for life. Well, that's nice. Farewell, Master. I won't forget your kindness. Yeah, it's always nice to make a new friend. And here we are back at the farm. Oh, get away from me, goat. The map in this game is really pretty small. There's not a, there's not a whole lot, uh, too many places to go. Like I said earlier, this game I think was originally intended for younger audiences, so it's, it's really not that big. This bridge marks the boundary of Kyr Dalban. You notice something under the bridge. Now, I did not actually know about this in the original uh, time that I played the game. I found this out through watching an, another Let's Play earlier. And this is actually a very useful... I can't reach it from here. Actually, a very useful item. Reaching under the footbridge, you take the wallet and look inside. It is filled with food. So, that's actually a very useful item because due to that timer... Yep, see, now I'm feeling a little hungry. That timer for um, your hunger and your thirst is rather limited, and I, I don't remember it ever going as quickly as it did in this version. Um, it seems like it's very quick. So this little thing here is actually a magical wallet that's filled with an endless food supply, basically. This food wallet must be magic, since it never seems to run out of food. Which is good, because if we take too long, we're going to need it. So let's eat. Nope, I'm not trying to use it on the bridge. Nope, stop. You eat as much as you need out of the food wallet to satisfy your hunger, but yet it's still, it is still full. Excellent. Let's continue. Allons-y. Okay, so this is uh, the briar patch. There is a path leading deep into the forest, but it's overgrown with briar bushes. It seems to be impassable, but it might be worth exploring. Let's do that. There were a couple of little uh, mazes in this game where you just had to kind of futz around until you found your way through. Kind of confusing, and not... there we go. Sometimes it's a little confusing as to where to go. You emerge from the brambles into a clearing with a strange underground house. Now this is where we were actually supposed to take uh, Henwen earlier. You can get here without uh, being captured by one of the Gwithaints, but you gotta move real quick. And besides, I figured that uh, in the movie, the plot is that, and the book, the plot is that Henwen is captured by the Gwithaints. So, I wanted to be true to the original. You are in a strange little underground house, hidden deep in the forest. If I had managed to get Henwen here, there was a little fairy flying around that kind of takes him and goes into that tunnel and keeps him safe. But I failed, so I gotta go rescue him. But first, let's see what's in here. Ah, some cookies. Om nom nom. Terran's sure to get hungry on his adventure, as I said. My throat is again dry. It's just so quick, that timer. 
you really have to be vigilant because as you'll soon see we're going to be often going to a location where it's really not easy to get water and it's also not easy to get back and get water so I may you'll probably see me constantly stop oh, this is a creepy looking area you are at the northeast corner of Morva Marsh it's a dismal gloomy swamp with dangerous bogs yep I don't think we're quite ready to go there just yet I'm trying to find some water gotta refill our flask or pouch whatever we'll see these trees again in a later King's Quest game this is a frightening forest with wicked trees the winds from the evil land of the horned king blow strongly here this looks like something we could use looks like a dagger you carefully remove the sharp dagger from the tree and then the little sign falls down the no trespassing sign is lying at the base of the tree can we take it? You have no use for a no trespassing sign, so you leave it. Yeah. Typically in these games you want to take anything that's not nailed down, but I guess the narrator has a point there. We probably don't need it. Alright, let's fill this back up real quick. Oh, it's already full. Never mind. I'll just give it a save right here. Because we're about to go into a slightly more dangerous area. Yep. So that's a hint that if you go in that water, there's no coming back. You can even see it looks like it's rushing pretty good. So let's just leave that alone. Aha! And here is the room I was talking about. It's one of those annoying mazes. You are at the base of the Eagle Mountains. Climbing them looks like quite a challenge. You're not whistling Dixie, narrator. I think I can remember. Okay, I think I'm getting this. When I played through this earlier, I was really confused and I had a lot of trouble. But, as long as you know where to start, it's pretty easy to figure it out. It's really hard to see, and um, because of all the rocks getting in the way, but I think I got it. Mm -hmm. Man, the memory never fails. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always really surprised. I remember, um, sort of a funny aside. I remember being a kid and thinking to myself, "Well, now that I've already solved all these puzzles, I'm going to have to wait like 15, 20 years to play it again." and then maybe it'll seem new. <laughs> nope, <laughs> nice try. But, I mean, this game, I think I probably played this first when I was about five years old. So, I mean, and that was that was easily 20, you know, almost 25 years ago that I played it, but I pretty much completely remember it. <laughs> probably never will leave my memory completely. You are in front of a vertical rock wall, too smooth to climb. You are not capable of climbing this wall with your bare hands. Talking to yourself has rarely ever been considered a good sign. <laughs> I have a bad habit of that. I like to talk to myself and kind of sort my thoughts throughout loud sometimes. Alright, we've got a rope. This is where we use it. Throwing your rope high overhead, it catches on a dead branch. You tie your end securely to the limb in front of you. I think it's totally random um, which side it goes to. It doesn't really make a uh, difference. Each side is uh, each side leads you to the exact same place. You grab the rope and hang on tightly. Don't look down because the rocks are far below you. This is very easy to screw up, so I want to make sure that I don't. Now, when I first played this, I thought you had, using the arrow keys, I thought you had to carefully, you know, hit right, then up, hit right, then up, hit right, then up, hit right, then up, and it was a pain. But then I eventually figured out that all you had to do was turn on the num lock and uh, hit 9, and you could go at a diagonal. In this case, it's even easier, I hope, and I can just click like so.
Ah, perfect. Perfect. Phew, made it. Gratefully, you dropped to the ledge. Now, anyone who's playing the original uh, King's Quest Three will remember this scene. There's a bit, there's a lot of uh, mountain climbing that you have to do in that game, and it can get a little tricky. Your fingertips clutch the tiny crevices in the rock face. So I'm going to very carefully, hopefully, shimmy my way along this. Because if you even just barely scrape the edge, you'll fall, and you'll fall all the way down. Just for fun, let's show you what I mean. Splat! <laughs> Sorry, Terran, you have failed in your quest. The Horned King now has the Black Cauldron, and evil rules Pradain. Now, this little uh, box here was added to be more like the SCI style. This this graphic here is new. That that wasn't in the original at all. This game was made for kids and was based on a Disney movie, so you were never going to see. Even as dark as some of the subject material in this game is, you would never see something like this. <laughs> Creepy. Seems like this person designed it to be more like the later uh, Space Quest series, which show a lot of really graphic imagery sometimes in the death scenes. So, But now is not the time to be dead. Let's get back to work. Careful. Okay, whoop, whoop. Whew, that was close. Now I'm going to wait to fulfill my thirst, because I want to make sure that it lasts. Hmm? Ooh, oh jeez, that was close. <laughs> you worry about Henwen, and wonder if she is a prisoner in the castle. Far in the distance is the gloomy castle of the evil Horned King. Giant Gwythanes circle its turrets. Alright, so it appears we have reached the castle of the Horned King. In the movie, uh, the Horned King was voiced by the incredibly talented John Hurt, and that, that man is very, very good at playing villains. Let's just put it that way. He does a tremendous job at really, really creating a creepy character that we will soon get a chance to meet. Now this is a little bit of a, a tricky little navigation here, because if that water doesn't look like it'd be very good to fall into. Okay, so in this case I have no choice. I have to have some water or I'm going to die. Okay. Oh, now I'm hungry too. Jeez, Taryn, you can't go ten seconds without drinking or eating something, can you? You eat as much as you need out of the food wallet to satisfy your hunger, but yet it is still full. Goody. Oop. That doesn't look very safe. A slimy green moat filled with alligators surrounds the dreadful castle of the Horned King. Well, there's a couple ways that you can get into the castle, and that is one if you're feeling particularly risky. But there's a much easier way this direction. Mm -hmm. So very much hearkening back to the movie, there's a cart here that we can hide in. Oh, oh shoot! <laughs> the alligators are merciless. Farewell, Assistant Big Keeper. Did not mean to do that. Ah, oh, shoot, now I gotta walk again. <laughs> There's one thing I've gotten used to over the years that's repeating what I'm doing in a game because I almost never save enough. I always try to rush through it and I just get sucked in and I forget about it. One of my good friends I always make fun of because he's a bit of a save ha -ha -lick. He'll 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 go like a minute and then he'll save again, but probably a smarter man than I. Okay, so once again, I have to drink water, and in a second, yep, now I'm hungry again.
Okay, so now hopefully it'll still be there. No, it's not. Okay, if I leave and come back in, there it is. All right. So as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by my impending doom, this little cart here you can hide in. Gathering your courage, you leap into the rear of the wagon. And we wait for one of the henchmen to come and bring it in. Henchman continues into the castle without noticing you. You have just ridden into the Horned King's castle on the henchman's wagon. Be careful! You leap out of the henchman's wagon. Oops. Now that narrator wasn't whistling Dixie. This is a pretty dangerous area to be in. See, I think this little alcove here. I don't think there's anything here. You are in the central courtyard of the castle. The great chains of the drawbridge stretch over your head. Yeah, I don't think there's anything here. I can't help but look at these graphics and think to myself, did I really think this was all that high tech back in the day? <laughs> it so does not live up to the current graphics. I mean, graphic production in games has just come so far. Still, at the same time, the the animation does a lot to really uh, evoke a lot of uh, emotions as far as like the anxiety and the gloomy nature of the castle. The Gwithaint appears to be hungry for assistant pig keeper. I th think he kind of snaps at us if we get too close. I don't know if he can actually do any damage. But... There's a closet door here. If we ever get captured by the guards, they throw all our possessions in there. It's important to keep in mind. Ah! So there are these little henchmen that are running all over the castle. If you run into a room, you're going to hear that theme. One of them will be uh, heading your way real quick. So, always good to be careful. Got to be careful on these stairs, too. If you, if you uh, fall off, it's a one-way ticket to death. Whoop. Okay, so there's a wall there. That's nice. I could think of another Sierra game where it's not that kind. There's a spiral staircase, and it ain't easy to get up that one. I'm having some good luck in that I haven't run into too many henchmen yet. Horned King's men are celebrating the capture of Henwen. So I guess I'll... whoop! Oh, and there he is! Be gone, my henchmen! I have important business with the oracular pig! <laughs> and they're like, poof! They disappear. It's Henwin! No! That little guy there is known as Creeper. He's his lackey. Ah! Run! Run, Terran! So now we have to get back down there and we have to go grab Henwin before he reveals the location of the Black Cauldron. I don't think the timer is active unless you're in the room, so we should be okay. If you sit around there at the balcony and wait too long, eventually uh, the Horned King learns the location of the cauldron, and then you're officially screwed and it's game over. We cannot let him get that. <laughs> 